Hey everyone, I hope this Erev Shabbos message finds you and your loved ones continuing to be positive and happy, and that you are all healthy and safe and well. We read in this week's Parsha and Parsha's Korach of the tragic events that happened in the wake and the aftermath of Korach's brazen uprising and his rebellion against the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron after the rebels themselves were killed by Hashem, some through a supernatural fire and others when the Piha Oretz, the earth consumed them. So even though we would think otherwise, the people displaying themselves as an Amkishe Oref continued their rebellious ways. They complained by saying that you, Moshe and Aaron, that it was you that killed Hashem's people. The people contended and insisted that Korach was correct in challenging Moshe Rabbeinu and his leadership, and that the rebels were sincere and righteous people. Hashem responded angrily, and he informed Moshe Rabbeinu of his plan to annihilate the people. Stand aside from this congregation and I shall consume them in an instant, which was then followed by the unleashing of a deadly magefa, a deadly plague. Moshe immediately instructs Aaron to hurry along and to offer the ketores, the incense, which had the effect of ending the plague, but only after the death of over 14,000 people. Now, how he knew to do that was as Rashi, citing the Gemara Masech HaShabbos that we recently had in the Dafyomi, explains that when Moshe was receiving the Torah at Har Sinai, he was taught a very special secret, that the offering of Ketores, the offering of the incense, has the ability to bring kapara, has the ability to bring atonement, the ability to end a plague. And this is how he knew precisely how to instruct Aaron to bring an end to the devastating magefa that was taking place. What though, however, we wonder is the connection between plagues and the Ketores offering. Why would specifically Ketores have the effect of ending a plague? So the Mepharshim, the commentaries explain that the common denominator between the Reach, the scent of the Ketores and plagues, is that they both rapidly spread. They both cover vast distances in a relatively short period of time. Infectious diseases, as we all unfortunately know, can very quickly affect large numbers of people. And that's why we have to continue to take coronavirus seriously by following the rules and the guidelines, the protocols, by wearing masks and by practicing social distancing, not to deviate one iota. And so too it was with the reach, a smell, a scent, the smell of the fragrance of incense, which wafts through the air, it's likewise carried fast and far by even the slightest breeze. Korach, see, he poisoned the atmosphere and the Machina Israel through his cynicism, through his terrible negativity. He bred anger and unhappiness by accusing Moshe and Aaron of selfishly asserting their authority for their own personal self-interests. He created a contaminated environment of tension, of rage, and the antidote to the environment he created was nothing other than the Ketores, with its pleasant and beautiful reach, its smell, which had the power and influence to eclipse Korach's aura of rebellious negativity with the fragrance, with the smell of wholesomeness, righteousness, and truth. As the Mishnah teaches, that the scent of the Ketores offered in the Beis HaMikdash reached all the way to the city of Yericho, representing the spread and the influence of the Beis HaMikdash and what it stood for well beyond its immediate Daladamos. The scent that emanates is one that comes from the Kedusha and the holiness of mitzvos that are observed in the proper way. The Gemara and Masech Shabbos that we will soon have in the Daf Yomi relates that a Roman emperor once approached Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania and asked him, why is it that your ochel, that your food, has a special scent on Shabbos Kodesh. So he answered him, it's because I have a certain spice, a spice that's called Shabbos, that I put into the food, and this creates a special smell, a special fragrance. So the emperor then asked Rabbi Yoshua to give him some of that spice that his food too could also would have this unique spell, smell, this unique aroma. So the rabbi explained that the spice is effective only for those who observe Shabbos. And that, friends, is our charge. It's for us to remember that Shmir Shabbos, as well as the faithful and the proper observance of all mitzvahs, Taryag mitzvah, 613 commandments, it generates as a result 
a pleasing fragrance, an aura of joy and positivity, optimism and kindness, which then quickly spreads and impacts the people around us and those the world over by making the world a more happier, a more spiritual, and a more pleasant place. Let's take this message to heart and let's perform the mitzvot as they're meant to be performed. From my family to yours, I want to wish each and every one of you a peaceful, a positive, a joyous, and a celebrating Shabbos Kodesh.